One of the biggest reasons why agents struggle to scale their business is because they're not actually running it like a business. A lot of agents are not running the real estate business in a way like a traditional business is run. And then they're wondering why they're hanging on by a thread or why they're not able to scale. And I'm going to break down the four reasons why that's the case so that you can actually overcome it, start to take control of your real estate business and manage it in a way that is going to be predictable, scalable, and give you efficiency in terms of creating wealth as a real estate agent. So without further ado, let's break down the four key ways to run your real estate business like an actual business. What's up guys, my name is Mike Sherrod. Thanks so much for tuning in. As always, um, if you don't know who I am, I train thousands of agents every year to scale their business with social media and modern strategies, um, and I'm with eXp Realty. But I want to explain how to run your business like a freaking business because a lot of people don't. So let's first start off by talking about the multiple departments that are necessary in terms of running a real estate business. Now, yes, in the beginning, you're going to have to be the manager, the CEO of every single one of these departments. But in due time, as you start to scale your business, you're going to need to hire additional roles. Um, and this is where you've got things like advertising, marketing, you've got, you know, customer service, you've got customer fulfillment, you've got customer retention, um, and you've got all these different departments that you need to run with your business. And again, where a lot of people start to struggle um, is if they start to leave out the things that are actually going to allow them to operate their business like customer retention, um, which again comes back to leveraging a CRM um, and properly nurturing your database. But you have to understand that as you start to want to scale your business, as you start to do more deals, you're gonna have to start to look for different ways to find efficiencies in scaling your business like can you hire a VA or a TC to do some of your customer service in terms of your contracts and engagement and keeping them in the loop every step of the way? In terms of the fulfillment, um, as we've got here, can you find different ways to actually create efficiencies in order to template certain things in order to create a repeatable process or SOP, standard operating procedures, that if you want to start or scale a team, other people can come in and start to fulfill your clients like you have done before so that there's no dip or change in terms of the experience that you're providing them. Um, and making sure that again, as you start to look at different ways to scale, one of the best ways to do it is to double down on marketing, but to outsource your advertising in terms of getting somebody else to run some of your marketing material and your advertising material um, so that you can focus primarily on what you need to be focused on, which for any real estate agent is the customer fulfillment or client fulfillment um, department, right? Everything else over time can actually be outsourced um, and handled by somebody else that is going to allow you to create efficiencies in your business. The next thing that we're gonna look at is the numbers. And if you look at any business, anybody knows that business is just numbers. Money in, money out, it's plain and simple. That's it, that's all. Um, and when you look at business, the ones that are thriving know all the numbers that they need to know. Um, you have to understand that what gets measured gets managed. And this is important um, for a number of different reasons that I'm gonna explain here. Because when you start looking at the numbers, you need to know very key pieces of detail. For example, in terms of your database, if you properly service it, how many referrals per year does that turn into? If you're doing lead gen, what is your conversion percentage in terms of the amount of leads to the amount of calls, to the amount of appointments, to the amount of listings or buyers that you get? This is really important because when you start looking at this, one of the ways businesses make more money, so they increase their income, is by looking at KPIs or key performance indicators in order to understand where can they make up more money in terms of profit, right? Where is things being wasted so that they can cut certain things that are again, taking a dive into the profit. Because if you don't manage your numbers and if you don't know where things are coming from or how your ads are performing or anything else like that, you're ultimately going to be spending a lot of money on things that are not that efficient and not that effective to scale your business. But if you don't measure it, you can't manage it. And that's where a lot of people go wrong is real estate agents are notoriously terrible for measuring their numbers. If you ask me, I know every single detail of my business, how much money I make from every single business down to the person, down to the activity, and I outsource as much as possible. Um, and I'm very good at cutting things quickly because I can actually measure it and identify that it's not working out. Whereas a lot of people are just throwing money at the wall and spaghetti at the wall, seeing what sticks and hoping 
hoping to God that it's going to allow them to scale. But if you don't know your numbers, you're never going to scale. Now that leads into the next thing, which is scaling. So when we want to start scaling, we have to do a couple different things. We need to look for efficiencies. We need to look for leverage. We need to look at opportunities to outsource. And this is really important because once we want to start scaling, because we actually know our numbers, finally, um, we need to start looking at efficiencies in the ways of, for example, if you find yourself doing repetitive tasks, how can you template it? If you want to create leverage, right? How can you start to get other people to fill in the voids of your weaknesses, right? By creating partners, right? So partnerships. And that also leads down to outsourcing, right? Looking at things like VAs, TCs, and all of these things up here that we talked about previously that can be done by other people um, as you want to start to scale. But there's a couple other things that I didn't talk about that are equally as important um, that most people avoid. And that comes down to learning and adapting. And this is where a lot of people struggle. And what I mean by that is when you look at most businesses, for example, video. Video is essential for real estate agents right now. But I constantly have agents reaching out to me saying, Mike, I'm not good at video. I'm not gonna get on video. Um, and they're not adapting. So what happens if you don't adapt as a business is you fall behind the curve. But a lot of agents just are ignorant to the fact where they think that somehow magically in their real estate business, if they don't adapt to modern ways of doing business, that they're still just going to scale their business every year, thrive, build the seven figure real estate business of their dreams, and everything's going to be fine and dandy. It's not going to happen. And that comes because they don't want to learn. People stop learning. And this is really detrimental um, because as businesses scale, if you look at Elon Musk, if you look at Tesla, if you look at Richard Branson, if you look at Jeff Bezos, if you look at any sort of entrepreneur, you know, Russell Brunson, Tony Robbins, they're always on the leading edge of what's relevant. They're always adapting to the current market conditions and what is relevant in order to keep them multiple steps ahead of the competition. But somehow, most real estate agents don't want to adapt and they just create a linear way of saying that they're not good at something so they're not gonna do it. Well, it's actually a binary thing because it's not that you can't do it, it's how much are you willing to invest your time into learning how to do it. Um, so the ones that are going to scale are the ones that are going to learn and they're going to adapt to what's relevant. Short form content, TikTok, I hate it but I do it every day. Um, because again, I understand it's important and it's relevant at this current point in time. And then the final aspect that most people don't do as well is understanding your unique value proposition and your unique selling proposition. Let me explain. When you look at a product or like we have in real estate, which is a service, the ones that win are the ones that don't just have like a small difference in terms of how much better they are, but the ones that have a massive difference in terms of how much better they are. Because one of the things that you have to understand is that most people don't know who you are. And if people don't know who you are and your service is similar to the rest, then for them, even if you're just slightly better, then it doesn't make much of a difference and they're just gonna work with whoever they already know. Whereas if you have a product or service and you make sure that it is massively better in obvious ways, they are going to work with you because they can justify not working with somebody that they already know to work with you because the service is so much greater and different than they would get elsewhere. And the only way to do that is to, again, identify a unique value proposition or unique selling proposition for what makes you different. And it can't just be that you love working with people, that you love helping people, um, that you just run a couple ads. Everybody does that, right? What is going to make you so different that people can actually make a decision to not work with a friend or a family member or somebody that they already follow on social media and to work with you and that's where you start to see businesses that thrive and go exponential and make massive amounts of money like click funnels for example one of the things click funnels did is they made it so much easier than any other platform to make funnels and landing pages that it, they became a monopoly and everybody decided to work with them. Even though there's multiple other companies and services out there that allow you to create funnels and landing pages. They were just so exponentially better that it made it a no brain decision to leave a different service to work with them. The same thing goes with real estate, is that if you cannot identify what makes you so different, then you need to get back to the drawing board because ultimately, the last thing I'm gonna leave you with 
is that what this does is when you properly understand what makes you different, this is going to lead into your marketing, which leads into your messaging. And once you understand what makes you so different than anybody else, you can start to convey that through your marketing, convey that through the messaging in your content, your copy, your creative, things like that, so that you can start to create that brand awareness using paid advertising that people are actually going to start to get to know you and what makes you so different because you might do an incredible job. You might be leagues above anybody else, but if nobody knows that, then it's never going to work to your advantage. So first you need to understand the unique value proposition. Then you need to create the messaging around that. Then you need to share it through marketing and then amplify it through paid advertising. So this is how to properly run your real estate business like a business. And hopefully it just gives you some food for thought as to what you can do better this year so that you can continue to scale and not hit a plateau by hanging on by thread like most agents agents do. So I'd love to know what your biggest takeaway was from this video. Um, and again, as always, thanks so much for tuning in and I really appreciate the support. So please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.